Um, ready? Yes. Welcome, and today I'm at the New Hampshire Liberty Forum in uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, and joining me is the spokesperson for the Free State Project, Baron Swearingen. Another record turnout. Why don't you tell we us did. about it? Yeah, this is our fourth New Hampshire Liberty Forum. We had, uh, I don't know the exact number, but 500, probably more than 500 people here. It's the biggest one we've ever had in terms of overall weekend registrations. Um, and we set a couple milestones within the last week. At the Free State Project itself, we crossed the 10,000 participant mark. The question of what is the Free State Project is an important one to answer. Yes. And quite simply, it is a migration of pro-liberty activists to the state of New Hampshire who will agree to exert the fullest practical effort toward the creation of a society in which the maximum role of government is the protection of life, liberty, and property. The Free State Project itself doesn't take positions on issues or candidates or legislation or tactics. We do explicitly state that we don't welcome people who promote violence, racism, or bigotry. Uh, but beyond that, we don't dictate policy. We're not involved in activism in New Hampshire. Um, and, and I think it's important to say that right up front. We are a vehicle. We're seeking people who want a government whose maximum role is the protection of life, liberty, and property to come here. Yeah. And that's all we do. And it really has attracted the more peaceful activists, the more experienced yeah. activists, because the, the folks that I've seen advocate violence get run off pretty quick by this crowd. They do, and there's been some cases where um, when, when the evidence is compelling, I say evidence, the things that we hear about um, in the Free State Project is compelling. We remove people as participants and tell them, please don't come here. Okay. Uh, people who think that that's okay, you know, hey, these people like freedom, so, they, so racism is okay. No. We, we take people out of our database. So let's talk about some of the positive things that the yeah. activists here are doing. Um, when I think of how to categorize activism, I think more in terms of styles than issues. So on one hand, there are people who are political, and there have been many people with, with political success, people elected to the state house, boards of selectmen, budget committees, planning boards, you name it, all the way from you know dog catcher up to state representative. Mm -hmm. um, there are people who uh, are on the opposite end of the spectrum, hate politics, and everything in between. There are people who work in the media, like yourself, uh, shows like Free Talk Live, newspapers, you know, the uh, New Hampshire Free Press, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who are educationally oriented. They've gone into teaching or. Um, they just habitually educate their neighbors, they, they're, right. they're Gabby. Uh, people who have started businesses, uh, I think of like Murphy's Tap Room and, and uh, Liberty Books and things like that, those are forms of activism. Mm -hmm. uh, people who have gotten involved in civic organizations, uh, people who have participated in civil disobedience, people who have uh, worked not in legislation or politics directly, but in the law, there's several attorneys who have moved up here. So there's lots of different styles and forms and methods and the Free State Project doesn't itself take a position on any of that. Mm -hmm. The common thread is that statement of intent. Those people all are doing what they're doing because they want a society where the maximum role of government is the protection of life, liberty, and property. So from the people looking at this outside that are not familiar with these ideas, open carry uh, yeah. events, there have been 420 celebrations, there's been the political activism, just right. topless uh, protests, it goes yeah. across the board. Well, there's, vi there's visible stuff like it, and of course the open carry stuff is not civil disobedience, mm -hmm. uh, it's legal. Right. Um, and some of the other stuff does qualify as civil disobedience. There are big cases where the disobedience hasn't been very civil, um, and other cases where it's been very, very civil. Yes. Everybody in the whole state of New Hampshire, I'm sure, wants to change at least one law and probably doesn't obey all of them all the time. And who could, you couldn't possibly read it. Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a bit um, disingenuous to take that mm -hmm. position, in my opinion. Uh, civil disobedience has a long history of uh, promoting freedom. And that, as a value, is the one thing I think that ties us all together, is the concept of freedom. And we state it as the maximum role of government is the protection of life, liberty, and property. But it's also about personal uh, freedom to choose, to yes. make bad decisions and, yeah, uh, and, and deal with the consequences, it. right? Right. And, and I think we ought to accept the consequences of bad decisions, understanding there's a difference between morally bad decisions and legally bad decisions. Some people stylistically are oriented towards let's change the law so that it uh, closer reflects uh, uh, right and wrong, the truth. And uh, other people are oriented towards uh, let's uh, make visible the injustice inherent in the law itself, the legislation itself. 
course, free state project doesn't take a position as long as you're not advocating violence, racism, or bigotry, mm -hmm. and you're after freedom. That's the thing that ties us all together. Okay. In a practical sense, it creates a sense of community because even though we may disagree on tactics or issues, you know, there's gun people that wouldn't have, uh, you know, the the marijuana protests or topless things. You yeah. know, these are stereotypically very different crowds, mm -hmm. and uh, we could all get frustrated with each other. But when we understand that really this is it's, it's a non-planned, non-centralized simply ethically based or morally based idea of government shouldn't do any more than this. A lot of people think government should do way less than that. And that's okay. That's why we said the maximum role of government. The original observation was we're outnumbered. And the project seeks to solve that problem with migration. You know, let's find all the people who care about freedom that are willing to do something about it to move mm -hmm. here. Um, we believe, and I think rightly so, that that growing cadre of activists will be successful in producing a state where there's much more freedom than anywhere today in America. Um, and I hope that that's what happens. And, and yeah. of course, really long term, I would like this not to be the Free State Project, but the first Free State Project, really. And from what I've seen out of the political system, the growth of government or, you know, the seatbelt uh, law was mm -hmm. was stopped. That was tight. It seems like, yeah, but it, that it's did, close. But I think the difference in that was made by Free State Project participants. Yeah, it seems to be like the brakes are coming on the yeah. train, the sparks are flying, but it's still moving forward, but it's, it's still slowing moving, yeah, down. It's getting worse here now, and I'm not, I'm not uh, shy to say that. I think that's it's good to tell the truth. Things are getting worse here in New Hampshire. They're getting worse slower than they are in the rest of the country. They're getting worse really fast everywhere else. Yeah. Um, so it's not as though this is Libertopia the, the right now. Where can we go from here if we had 20,000 effective activists doing what these 800, or at least on paper, there's actually more than that, mm -hmm. are doing now? Uh, I think that would be revolutionary in every sense of the word. I agree. And uh, I think we need to do that. If we care about freedom, why wouldn't we? The people who are dedicated and committed yeah. seem to be coming here right. and getting active, and it's some of the most uh, exactly. talented activists. It is, and effective. Yeah. And that's a, that's a key. The key to success is not just activism. It's effective activism. We've done things that haven't been effective. We've done things that could have been but lost because we're still outnumbered, mm -hmm. you know, grossly. But if we learn and this is a learning process, if we learn how to be effective, I think we can succeed. I think morally we have the right argument, and I think there's enough smart people around here to, to come up with the right practical arguments. How do we solve the collective problems? That those do exist, um, as much as the hardcore anarchists would like to say they don't. They really do exist, and they do require solutions. They may not be government solutions. I don't think they are, and we have enough smart people to figure those things out. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the other side would assail that argument saying, well, show me the solution. Well, it may not be engineered yet. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist or can't exist. Okay. Uh, well, you certainly have your challenges uh, laid out. Absolutely. absolutely. And I look forward to uh, seeing my skills. Thank I you for joining me today. Thank you very much.